Science discovered that that process can release all that energy. The military did that, governments, us, we're in charge. Science is to enhance our existence. The big one there is obviously famine, okay? And you can't have a good life if you haven't got a life at all. And I'm all for ending famine, obviously, as long as it doesn't affect me in the slightest. Um, <laughs> which brings me to this little fad that we need to stamp out. This happened to me Christmas before last, exchanging gifts with friends, old friends, good friends, quite well off friends, if I'm being honest. I gave them a coffee making machine from Selfridges, top of the range. <laughs> they loved it, they loved it. And uh, they gave me mine, it was just a card. I thought, oh, vouchers. <laughs> I opened it up, it, it wasn't vouchers, it was just a card with uh, a picture of a goat on it. Um, and uh, some stuff about, uh, and I said, what's this? They went, oh, um, our gift to you is uh, we gave a goat to an African family. What? <laughs> I'm looking at the coffee machine thing. Is it too late to say that's a mistake? Take that back. <laughs> that out under their arm, right? So uh, I went, what is it? I went, oh, um, we bought you a goat and we gave it to an African family. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh. So I've got fuck all, basically. <laughs> that is basically what you're saying, isn't it? I mean, why the f I don't even know this African family. <laughs> Why would I give him a goat? Why would I give him my goat? A goat I didn't know I had till a minute ago. Give me my fucking goat. Where's my goat? I mean, the arrogance to say, I got you a goat, but I gave it away. Next year, I'm going to go, oh, I got you a hedgehog, but I threw it to some gypsies on the way. Is that all right? <laughs> this serves no purpose. This is good for no one. They're 50 quid down. I've got nothing, OK? The African family's going, not another mouth to feed, right? <laughs> the... the goat is going, where the fuck am I? <laughs> What the f... Uh, a week ago, I was gambling around the Cotswolds. Uh, there was grass and tourists with nuts and shit. This is a fucking dust bowl. This is shit. There's no way the goat wanted to go to Africa. There was no way. It was basically kidnapped. It was abducted. It was put in a sack and bundled on a boat to Africa, like roots in reverse. There is no way that... When they said, do you want to go to Africa? It went, definitely... No, no way. No. Come on, why didn't you want to go to Africa? Um... Lions! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, why don't you want to go to Africa? Um, AIDS! <laughs> <laughs> well, that shouldn't affect you. It shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so just be careful with charity, OK? Particularly at Christmas. That's when they sting you, when they give you a guilt trip. You're sitting down Christmas Day, you got all your food, loads of food, too much food. Probably going to throw a lot of it away. And all the adverts on telly are for charity, right? Um, this one runs every Christmas day. Is there an old lady near you, cold and lonely this Christmas? Yep, I fucking hate her. <laughs> Nosy bitch winds me up all year round. I can't wait for the cold weather, if I'm being honest. <laughs> There's no old lady near me. She died last year of hypothermia. <laughs> so, result. The other big campaign, the other big campaign, a dog is for life, not just for Christmas. Right behind that, I love animals, I'm really into animal welfare. And that's obviously aimed at parents whose kids go, can I have a puppy, can I have a puppy? No, can I have a puppy? Can I? And they give in to shut them up, and they get the puppy, and they like it when it's cute, then they grow up and they get bored with it, and they lumber the parents with it, and the parents get bored with it, and they abandon it. 11,000 pets abandoned in England and Wales last year, and I think kids should have pets. I think it teaches them life lessons. I haven't got children of my own, but I've got loads of nieces and nephews, and they've got kids of their own now. And I want to be a cool uncle and give them what they want, but I want to be a responsible one too and sort of not add to the stray problem. But I think I've solved the dilemma. This is what I do, OK, as a tip. You've got to wait till Christmas Eve, go to an animal shelter or an animal rescue home, not a breeder, and I go there and I go straight to the veterinary bit, and when they're dealing with, like, the little runts that are born all sick and... They're just putting them down. They've got no quality of life. I go, no, don't kill that one. I'll take that one. And they go, it's only going to live a day. <laughs> so I run home with it, going, don't die yet. Get a little Starbucks, a little bit of Starbucks. Don't die yet, don't die. And I run in, and I call my niece. She runs over. I go, look, oh, you got me a puppy. I go, your best uncle got you a puppy. Oh, thanks. Go and play with it, quick. Go and play with it. <laughs> And they take it to bed Christmas Eve and they sleep with it and they wake up Christmas Day, it's cold, dead, stiff, gone, so... <laughs> not a problem. Um, and they always come down and they say, Oh, oh, my 
my puppy's dead. And I go, what, the puppy your uncle got you? He did his bit, and whatever happened after that isn't his problem. And they go, yeah, and I go, oh, no, maybe you rolled over on it on the night. Oh, did I? Oh, no. <laughs> and they always go, I killed my puppy. I killed my puppy. I go, no, no, you didn't kill your puppy. Jesus killed your puppy. <laughs> on his birthday, because you didn't spend enough on your uncle's Christmas present. So, <laughs> they usually buck their ideas up the next year. Um, the other big campaign, of course, don't drink and drive. Right behind that as well. A lot more stigma attached now. Um, when I was growing up, there was no stigma. It was like, if you got away with it, that was all right. I'd be getting in the car with grown-ups and family, and I'd go, oh, you can't drive, you're drunk. And they go, it's all right, I won't get caught. But people now know that that's not the point. It wrecks lives. I've done it once. I'm not proud of it in the slightest. I'm fucking ashamed of it. I wasn't drunk, but I was over the limit. That was Christmas, and I took the car out. And I knew I shouldn't. I knew at the time I shouldn't be in this car. But I learned my lesson, because I nearly killed an old woman. In the end, I didn't kill her. In the end, I just raped her. But as I say, nothing came of it. Because luckily, thousand to one shot, I know, she had Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a credible witness.